what is it to be haunted by your past? Why are men expected to be invincible? I know that it has taken more courage than most people have to muster to live the life that I did. I awoke from a nap about a year and a half ago with the words, Jeff died when he was 11, in my head. The one prevalent memory I have from the last 25 years is sitting up at night, trying to understand what was wrong with me, drinking myself to sleep. Sit and notice, we all have subconscious ticks. That moment when you start tapping your fingers, that moment when you start playing with your hair. Those are subconscious expressions that you have developed over time to soothe, comfort, or possibly as a result of a joyful anticipation. You did not will it to be. It arose out of the circumstance. So when you experience that tick, it is a subconscious expression to something similar to whatever caused you to create it. As a boy, I was told that I was gifted, talented, and intelligent. In middle school, I was placed in the accelerated math and English program. In middle school, I was placed in the gifted and talented program. My mother took every opportunity to talk about her talented and intelligent son. I didn't know how to live up to that. Consequently, I quit gifted and talented and deemed myself a failure. When I was 12, I realized that I was gay. And all I could think at that time was that my mother would not want that kind of son. The human mind is a complex, cross-associative process. Events to the mind do not always follow linear time. They follow association. They don't simply line up in order to be seen clearly. And due to denial or repression, mental memory and emotional memory do not always agree. Those subconscious expressions originate from the same psychological emotional process that when involving trauma becomes PTSD. So what then is trauma? Trauma simply is a distressing physical emotional intensity that the brain, the mind cannot process or an unwanted intensity that impresses so strongly upon the mind body and emotions that it remains vivid. A sudden car accident, combat, or even more plainly, feeling trapped in a situation that you don't want to be in because you don't feel you have control over it or you can't understand it 
or it is too terrifying for you. I like sitting out here. It's peaceful. I haven't known this kind of peace in 35 years. Now imagine that the subconscious tick you experience is the emotional, mental memory of something that terrified you or you felt trapped in and that its expression is to relive it viscerally in emotion and memory. Imagine that the subconscious tick is a pattern of thought and feeling that constantly erodes your sense of self-worth and identity constantly, where every good thing in your life gets wrapped in that continual erosion, always bringing you back to a place where you don't matter, where you aren't worth anything, where the only way you may feel any place in this world is to constantly ingratiate yourself to people, pleasing them so that you don't lose them, and maybe you can grasp a moment where you might feel that you belong. And even then, you never truly feel like you belong. I call it living behind the glass wall. You are there, but you are not apart. When I was 12, I already felt I couldn't live up to the expectations I thought had been put upon me. When I was 12, I realized I was gay, and I thought society believed gay to be wrong and dirty. When I was 12, I learned to pretend my life and hide who I thought I was, dirty, wrong, and incapable. When I was 12, I began to think I was unlovable. When I was 11, I died. The mind and the emotional process is a complex cross-associative process that does not line up events in a perfect little understandable order. And denial and repression create even more confusion because mental image, thought, and emotional memory often contradict each other, the result of trying to cope with something you cannot process or deal with. You remember that nice Christmas morning simply and clearly because everything in that memory was nice. Your mind and emotions can recall it clearly because all of it is in agreement. Now rework that Christmas morning. You are eight years old. You wake up with a joyful anticipation and run downstairs only to find your whole family dead on the floor. Horrific thought, I know. Now every time you see a present, you relive that moment. Every time you hear a Christmas carol, you relive that moment. Every time a similar situation arises, such as a future Christmas morning, you deal with it in the same intense way you dealt with the trauma. Now imagine that the horrific event was a violation of you, a situation that you can't understand, can't get away from, and you are left asking yourself, why did I let him do that to me? Over and over again. When I went away to college, 
I was still a 15-year-old boy inside, feeling unlovable, incapable, ignoring his feelings for the boys, pretending his life, pretending to be someone else, someone people would like. I took those weaknesses and my kindnesses into three years of being controlled, manipulated, and sexually used by someone who took advantage of my weaknesses and my kindnesses. Those three years devastated my life. You experience shame because of the violation. You experience a lack of confidence because you should have been able to do something to stop it. Your self-worth drops into the toilet because now you are dirty and defective. And who would want to love the dirty, defective person you believe yourself to be? And now you feel alone. Now every time you think of you, you relive the horrific event because you, your identity, is the associate of trigger. Yet no human being can live that way. So you create the safe person to be, the one that doesn't remember, the one that people would like. Only you're not sure what that is. How should you act? What do you need to do or accomplish that would make you someone that people would like or even love? So you spend your time second-guessing yourself, double-checking and worrying that you're not doing something that may cause people to leave. The whole time desiring to belong, while at the same time feeling dirty, defective, fearing that if anyone got too close, they would discover your secret. Because the truth is, no matter what you tell yourself, no matter what you pretend, no matter what you mentally repress, your emotions remember, your body remembers, feelings of touch that can trigger physical response and emotional memory, which makes intimacy difficult. When I was 26, I recognized that I needed help. I sat in my father's den at his computer a mere eight feet from him. I knew it had to do with the man who used me and how I felt about guys. But I couldn't separate it out. I couldn't understand. And I couldn't ask for help because I didn't think anyone would understand or believe me. So I took who I was and buried it with what had happened to me and just decided to pretend my life. Two years later, I had a severe mental break. I lived the next five years suffering from psychosis, delusion, in and out of psych wards, feeling completely alone. In 1998, I tried to kill myself. In 2000, I told myself, I have to fix this. So I duct taped and paper clipped my psyche back together and fought to find my life. Eventually I married a woman, helped to raise her two children, waking up every day with the hope that I would understand, with the hope that I could be happy, and every night feeling a failure 
and drinking myself to sleep. Year after year, not understanding why I couldn't do it. In 2019, I had a final break. And the truth came out. I wasn't some defective, failure, worthless man. I was nothing but a gay kid who had been sexually abused. And finally, healing and knowing myself after 40 years. It takes a lot of energy to live this way. It's a life without hope. It's a life without love. It's a life of confusion, fear, and pain. We just get good at wearing the face, at playing the part. Because we still have to live in this world. We laugh. We work. We do everything that everyone else does. It's just at the end of the day, we cry inside, often without even knowing why. It takes a lot of courage, strength, and determination to live this way. This is the expression and experience of PTSD, at least as I experienced it. I was sexually used and abused for three years and I lived with PTSD for 33 years. Some men have lived with it even longer. This is not a clinical presentation by any means. This is simply my first hand account, my actual experience. Yet I know it applies to the other men I interact with because we understand each other. I just want the public to understand as well. I want these men who are afraid to speak to not be afraid anymore. Despite what people may think, they are all intelligent, compassionate men, doctors, artists, gay and straight. They don't ask much. They just don't want to be dismissed. We have already felt invisible for way too long. 